Welcome. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Unmasked, where things are discovered, uncovered, brought to the light, and made known. I'm your host, Lamar Barrett, coming live to you from PG County, Maryland. If you're interested in finding out about the untold stories being behind being a college coach, this is a show for you. Being a former assistant men's college basketball coach for 16 years, there are so many untold stories behind the scenes in the life of a college basketball coach. Now, let's unmask them. Today's guest is a longtime assistant, a great friend and mentor, someone I can call a big brother. Um, and he's a Stanford, Connecticut um, native, uh, Kevin Clark. And I'm going to read you a little bit about his bio and before we bring Kevin on. Uh, Kevin, uh, after he was done playing um, for the first time after college, he uh, went and uh, did a year as an assistant coach over at Holy Cross up in Worcester, Mass. From there, he actually went and played a professionally a year in between getting back into coaching at Clark um, um, up, in, up, in Ma up in Massachusetts. And he also began coaching women at Clark uh, for a few months before going on to the men's side. So he was an assistant there from 84 to 87, and then he became the head coach in 1987 uh, for four years. And from there, he went on to Fairfield University um, and then uh, had a stint at uh, George Washington right here in uh, the, the, the DMV area um, with Mike Jarvis for four years before heading on to St. John's for five years as an assistant and then as an interim coach for the 03 or 04 season at St. John's. And then – Kevin goes to Rhode Island for seven um, years as an assistant coach with Jimmy Barron. And then now he's presently at Towson for the last nine years. And I've been fortunate to coach against Kevin uh, for uh, three of those nine years while he was at Towson. But I just want to say welcome to the show to my good friend, uh, Kevin Clark. Hey, uh, hey Lamar, uh, thanks so much for having me. You know, it's an honor to be on the show. Uh, and, and, and thank goodness you didn't tell everybody what our record was playing against you at Hofstra uh, during your time there. <laughs> I'll never talk about that, man. I'm not going to bring up records. I just know that, you know, uh, you know, Pat Scary does a good job. He does a great job there. You, you've been with him uh, since the beginning. Um, so, you know, I know what you guys have done and what you've done in the Colonial. Uh, so, you know, I only still expect big things uh, even going into the future. So, Kevin, with all of that being said, let's get unmasked, man. Um, the first thing I always, you know, do when I open up the show is like, look, man, there's no handbook to being a college coach. I don't think people understand it. Maybe I'm thinking of one other job um, in the world, it seems like that. There's no training to your job. Being a car salesman. Just go and get it done. No, no handbook to that. And college, being a college coach. So, tell me about your first day, first week, first month after things are done with human resources and orientation. Like, especially when no one gives you direction in this business. It could be at any one of your stops. It could have been the first job you had. But like, tell, tell me what's that like? What's that like? I, 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 Lamar, re really. Um... It's, it's more like meeting players. You, got, you know, for, my first thing has always been I, I, I need to meet the guys. Um, so that's a big piece. Um, spend some time with them, maybe go to lunch, you know, do some things like that. Um, you know, in front of you, you get to your desk the first time. You get to your desk, there's nothing on your desk either. So you're like, oh, well, what, can, I, can I get a notebook? Can I get some supplies or something? So, you know, you spend some time there too. Um, one of the key people always is, your administrative assistant, so you want to make sure you spend those th those minutes with that person as well, and kind of get a lay for the land, how to how to get everything done. Um, and then for me, it's to the rest of the community. You know, my my thing has always been there's something that makes every institution tick, um, and it may not be who you think. It may not be that president, it may not be that vice president. You know, it might be that custodial person. You know, there's a lot of people that are involved. So, like, I always start to try to try to connect with all those people. Um, I try to connect with the university police as quickly as possible. I connect over in the cafeteria. I need to know those people. Um, so I try to meet as many people as I could. 
um, on our campus uh, just so that uh, I have all those allies, you know, and then, then you get back and it's time to call parents. Uh, it's time to watch films so you know what you're talking about when you speak to your players. Um, but, but to me, it's a huge piece is just getting to know people. Good stuff there. Good stuff. Um, what was your best and worst recruiting story? Like, I know people, you've been in it for a while. Like, what would your best and worst recruiting story be? Best and worst recruiting story. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think if, if there is such thing as a best. Um, you know, I've got some interesting recruiting stories. Um, uh, I remember going to recruit a big kid up in Canada and, it's, and uh, you know, we get into the home visit. It's got to be about, I don't know, probably around four o'clock or so. And, and uh, we got going in there. And as the time went on, I'm like, I can't see anybody in the room anymore because, you know, it's got dark, so it's gotten dark outside. And then nobody would put the lights on. Nobody put the lights on in the, in the room. And I'm, you know, and then finally, we, we just finally said, hey, listen, can somebody put a light on in the room so we can see what's going on? So, you know, that was one interesting story. And that probably for me, um, we, did a, we did a visit, we did a visit in um, Cincinnati, Ohio. So we, we walk into a visit, we sit down, we start doing this presentation. We're probably going hour and 15 minutes. I was a good solid hour and 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden, you saw this blanket move in the corner. And it was the grandmother. The grandmother woke up in the middle of the thing, had been covered up the whole visit, scared the crap out of everybody. You know, so I, I would tell you, I mean, those are two interesting ones. And I, then I've got others where, you know, just the crazy recruiting trips in itself and going from Pittsburgh to Canada to New Jersey, a midnight all-star game, to driving down to Eastern Invitational, all from, from five in the morning, five at night, five in the morning till five in the morning. So I, I've seen a lot of different, different trips like that. Wow. <laughs> those, those are interesting. Um, Kev, you've been in a long time, and I mean, you've got two adult kids. Now I think it's two adult kids graduated from college and, um, you know, been with you, with your wife, but like, People don't understand this business, like um, how much time you spend um, away from family and stuff. Like, you know, you are uh, 355, 360 days a year and all that stuff. But, I mean, what did you have to give up achieving your current level of success? I, I gave up a, a lot of family time, a whole lot of family time. Um, a whole lot of personal time. You know, there's no such thing as hobbies or anything like that. People ask me about golfing and like, I never golf, never fish, never did any of it. Um, just too busy, you know, but I mean, I, I would say the family time is probably the biggest thing. I spent, let's see, six years at St. John's and four of them with, were, with, were without the family. You know, my family stayed in Alexandria, Virginia when, when I left uh, George Washington. You know, my wife loved the area. The kids were happy. We, we nice little cul-de-sac we lived on. I mean, it was it was it was nice. I mean, really safe and all that. So they stayed there. Um, so that was a hard thing, well, you know, hard thing for them to grow up kind of without me, um, and for me to be without them. So I would say those are the toughest things. Yeah, and that's that's what most people do say that. Like I said, I don't think a lot of people understand that the sacrifices you have to give. You know, you know, like it's amazing how much time. And then when you sit back and think about it, it's like, wow, I didn't realize how much time I did miss um, uh, with, right. with family. Um, right. I would tell you, I would tell you that if I could go back and count it, I'd probably tell you I missed five years just oh. being in just being in hotels and everything else over time. I would say you probably missed five years. Wow. I, that's pretty I never thought of it like that that's you know what like when you start looking at things that is a lot of a lot of time wow right, right. Um, and you know and it was different too I mean you remember now tra traveling was different back in those days too so you know you, your recruiting calendars were different and all of that I mean you you were out entire months 
So like uh, J July 1st, you might leave your house. You could come back August 1st. That's true. That's why, and that's like recruiting has changed so much over the years and the, the minimum days and stuff like that. Like that's what people don't understand either. Some of the younger guys probably can't even believe like, wow, y'all did all of that. You know what I'm saying? So, right. But even without the GPS stuff, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's yeah, a lot of things. Don't that know. They don't know yeah. You carry those, uh, <laughs> you, you carry those directions that you've got printed from MapQuest and you were trying to look at them as you drove, you know, yeah. as you drove. And as not like I said, as you drove, um, there wasn't a lot of flights like, like guys take now. I mean, you know, um, you drove. So right. then that, that, that put more wear and tear on you and, and took you away even longer from the family because you had to, you had to do these drives. Um, Kev, you know this, you've been in long enough. Uh, you have, you know, you can do your best scout report, have one of your worst games. You can do your worst scout report and come out and be like, win by 15 or 20. Cause we know that the players, you know, depend on how much they are involved. But like, can you think of a time like, or, times like what was your best and your worst scouting report um i'm gonna tell you um william and mary would have probably been my best scouting report i, I at one point in time i feel like i knew everything about them i knew i knew uh all their play calls i could tell you their actions just like that um, I knew how to recreate them. I knew how to uh, teach them to to our scout team inside and out. Um, you know, I knew almost anything. Almost knew the sequence. Almost knew the sequence of plays. Um, so I would tell you, when I look at that, I'd probably say that. Um, probably one of my worst scout reports would have been, uh, I think, I think we were playing, I think it was, let's say Johns, we, we were playing, playing Notre Dame. And uh, my thing was, hey, look, we're going, we're going to play this boxing one. And, and um, I can't remember the kid's name, of Chris something that was a guard, nice little guard. And we, we decided we were going to play this boxing one. And I thought this was going to be the greatest thing in the world. And after he hit us for about 35, I figured it out that that was, wasn't the right way to go. But, uh, you know, uh, that, that's what I'd tell you. <laughs> Notre Dame. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> um, biggest challenge you have experienced since you've been in college coaching? Biggest challenge? Um, hmm. That's a good one because, uh, you know, there's probably a lot I just don't. I would say overcoming some of the hurdles we had when, in my time at St. John's um, and some of the media scrutinies that, that we went through uh, during one of the, one of the sort of, so to speak, scandal type deals that we had uh, where the young men got in some difficulties in Pittsburgh um, into you know that was that was pretty difficult to deal with. I mean, the the media yeah. covers that you got. Um, I did a media session with about seventy five print media people, um, all around a table. Uh, probably six seven cameras, uh, guys on ladders, guys laying on the floor, trying to get the worst angle they could find of you. Um, also, during that time, you did. Um, you know, you probably did seven or eight TV interviews back to back, you know, so just going through that piece. And then at the same time, knowing that you had a bunch of players that were going through a lot too, that were being judged a, a certain way um, was, was pretty hard for me to, for, to deal with. So that, that would probably be the toughest, toughest thing I've gone through. Mm. Um, you know, like I said, you've been in, and I know, I know your work. I'm seeing you for a long time, even when I was coaching high school basketball. So I've seen you and I've tried to follow a lot of stuff that you do and how you walk. But like, do you ever find there are things about you that people misunderstand? Like, you know, what are they? If there is something that people may misunderstand? Um, I don't know I, if, if, if there's probably, 
I, I guess it's maybe some people think I'm not as 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 aggressive as some some college coaches or their expectation that you be more aggressive that um, maybe that you're too nice of a guy maybe that you haven't promoted yourself enough um, to me that's what what I think people may not understand about what I'm all about and, and, and why I'm in the business. Hmm. Um, now, we're all in this business. We're all educators first. I know we, we, we've been college coaches and, um, you know, your job is a lot of times to win these games. Um, but, like, and I always say this, Kev, ever since I've been in college coaching, like, you know, parents drop these kids off 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. And, you know, like, my promise to them is, like, listen, you, like, I'm going to take care of your son. Like, you you have uh, done a great job of rearing your kids. I don't say raise. I always say rear. You raise cattle. But you've done a great job of doing that from young boy to man. Now it's our job to take them from young man to a grown man. Because for four or five years of their lives, you're – the most important thing, like that's the most important times of their lives when they're going, learning how to be out on their own, learning how to survive without their parents. And so you're teaching them a lot of life lessons. So what would you try to teach your players besides basketball? Um, probably one of the first, first things I probably try to teach our guys is, is, first of all, be on time. You know, be on time for where you're supposed to be. I mean, I, I've got a young man who's in, 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 uh, he's in coaching business now. He actually is a head coach. And uh, he was late for my first meeting. He was late for my first meeting, his first meeting as a college athlete. And um, I had closed the door. And it was probably, you know, 15 degrees outside. I made him stand outside until the meeting was over. Just to let just to let him come in and tell him he's got to come back and see me another day. So, I mean, to me, being on time, um, how to carry yourself, how you're perceived every day, um, you know, how to articulate in certain situations, you know, I mean, to me is 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 extremely important. How to be respectful, um, or or some of the things that I try to encourage our guys and always have encouraged our guys uh, to do. And then obviously the, the importance of their education and them being in class and doing all the things that are necessary to, to, to be successful in the classroom. So, um, and then just being there, you know, just kind of like letting them know that I'm there all the time, no matter what the issues are for them. So my door is always open um, and they know they've called me. They've come to my home before. Um, we've gone to eat. We've done to, going to do a lot of those different things um, because I, I do have that responsibility, and and that's that's a big responsibility for me. Yeah. Um, what 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 are your um, best and worst memories in coaching? Best and worst. Ooh, man. I, you know what? It's funny. I, I never, never really thought of best and worst memories. You know, Lamar, I don't, I don't know if, if I have best and worst memories. Um, I guess if there's best memories in coaching, I would tell you that it was probably winning a Big East championship, um, following a major disagreement with our players in the locker room the day before. I don't want to say fight. I'm going to say, I'm going to say disagreement in the semifinals. Uh, but then to win the Big East championship and watch the two guys that had the disagreement hugging on the front cover of the, of the newspaper uh, was probably a, a, a great, great memory um, in, in terms of the basketball side of things. Um, I don't know if there's a bad, a, really a, a worse memory. Um, I think all the, all the things that have happened in, in basketball for me have been, 
have been good. Some are some are, are lessons. Some are lessons for sure. But I, I I can't call anything anything bad. Good. I mean, like that's I just ask, see if you thought of it, and uh, and that's a good thing. If like you said, it's been lessons learned. So it's not a worse memory, but it's a lesson learned. Um, right. This is kind of you kind of said something earlier, and it may relate to it. I don't know. Um, what was the most stressful situation you have faced? Mm. Stressful situations. Um, probably going back, liking back to 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 St. John's, probably being one of the more stressful situations in the events that led up to to me taking over a program. Uh, were stressful because of the relationships that you have with people that you were replacing. Um, I, you know, our, our day that, that I was named that interim coach, uh, we walked into a locker room and uh, the players are like looking at people in the locker room like, like they had three heads. And I had to try to figure out how to be respectful to the administrators that were in the locker room and so on and so forth. And also not have the guys all get up and walk out. So at some point in time, I, I, I felt like I had to excuse the administrators. And it, it, was, it was interesting because I had to do something different that, that I'd never seen head coaches do. I, I, I had to, I went and took a seat in the middle of the room, like sort of like next to them, not, not in the front of the room. I didn't want to be in front of the room. I didn't want to be preaching at them. I wanted to be like next to them that we, we were doing, so we were about to do this together. This is, this is happening to all of us, you know what I mean? So, so I, I would tell you that that was probably a, a, a difficult time. Mm. I, can, I, can, I can see why, but that, I thought it was a, that's a great move if you said like, you didn't want to be in front of them, you felt like you, you were with them, and they probably felt a lot more at ease and more comfortable with that situation. Probably. Yeah, I mean, that, that was, it, was a hard, it was a hard time. You, you lose your, your head coach in a very short period of time uh, without any real warning. Um, you have administrators in your room that you only see when something wrong, goes wrong. Um, so it was, it was, it was tough. And, and, and the, the emotions were high in that room. They were, they were really, really high. I mean, and, and you had to figure out how to, how to bring that down because you also had to in turn a day later, you had to be in, in Georgia. You had to be in Atlanta, Georgia, to play the number 17 Georgia, Georgia Tech. So you had to sort of be ready for that, too. And that was on national TV. Wow. So, yeah. So there was a lot, a lot going into that, a whole lot going into it. I mean, you know, families and parents and everybody wanted answers. And, you know, you had to try to figure out how to give everybody answers and comfort them and, comfort your administration at the same time and at the same time to prepare and get a game plan ready and, you know, not be embarrassed on, on, on national TV um, as well and protect your guys. All good stuff. Um, this is kind of interesting because like you've seen, seen a lot and, uh, but like, I like to ask this question just because it kind of mixes some things up, but like, what is the strangest thing a player has done? outside of the basketball court <laughs> uh outside of the basketball court uh well i would say I've seen a player in a meeting throw a typewriter through the wall okay i mean i i've, I've seen that they they didn't really and i guess appreciate or understand the answers they were getting. And they, they, there was a lot of pent up anger and they threw a typewriter right through the wall. You know, it kind of got wedged right in the wall. So that would probably be that. I mean, I've seen some things that didn't involve practice, but sort of were around practice, but I, I would say throwing the typewriter would probably be the, uh, one of the strangest things I've seen. I, I would probably, that's something that's definitely strange. No question. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Like now, you like I said, you've been around. Like I think you should have. I thought you should have been a head coach a long time ago. I know you was once an in, in, interim, but like if you had a chance to work for anyone in men's college basketball, and you got a good one in Pat Scary, you've been with him for nine years. Like who would that be? And the reason why is like whether it's an AD or a head coach, you could name it. Like you've been at the highest level, um, but like. Who would that be and why? I mean, I, like I said, it, I know you work for Pat, and I, hopefully Pat doesn't, but everyone has, like, that dream person or dream guy or whatever. Who would, you, who would that be? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I, don't, I don't think I have that dream guy. I don't think I have that dream guy. I, I, I think there's characteristics of guys that I, that, I, that I admire. I mean, you know, I mean, a younger guy, I would tell you, um, I admire a lot of things that, that Tony Bennett does. Um, I, I admire a, a longevity um, and think a guy that gets, doesn't get a ton of credit in, in Leonard Hamilton. You know, um, you know, so there's a lot of guys out there that, that um, I can't tell you that, like, okay, that, that's, that's where I want to be. Um, I can tell you, I can tell you, I want to be at Duke because they win all the time. I can tell you, they want to be, you know, at Carolina because they win all the time. But you know, I know there's something that goes, that kind of goes with with that as well. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't think I really have that. I mean, like I said, I, I, there's characteristics of, of different different coaches that I, that I do do admire and I can appreciate from far. That's, that's I mean, that's hey, that's just as good an answer as any. Um, the biggest accomplishment you have experienced since you've been a college coach? Biggest accomplishment. And you hit me kind of like kind of hard here to, to, with these things. Let's see. Um, biggest accomplishments. Um, hmm. Well, you know what? I, I, I would tell you, I'd go away from basketball for for this accomplishment and that I took a I took a young man, um, I was at Clark and from Worcester Mass. He he went to Cleveland State initially out of out of uh out of high school and uh wasn't happy there and he decided he wanted to transfer back and and we took him, we took him to Clark and he ended up being an all-American player. Uh, wasn't always the All-American student, wasn't always the guy that was up on time or anything like that. And I partnered with our, our um, dean of students at the time, and we decided that we made a decision to take him and we were going to make a decision to make sure that he, that he did, that he graduated. So we did all the things necessary, getting him up, making sure, stopping at his apartment, uh, he's, the, the, the dean's, the dean's secretary would call him in the morning, eight o'clock, go school, you've got to be up now. So now I'd get over there, we'd get him to class and all those things. And, and I remember this day in May, uh, it was graduation day and he had his cap and gown on and he graduated. And, you know, his mom came walking over to me and said, thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. You know, and she said her job was done. And, you know, unfortunately, a month later, she really meant it. She passed away. Wow. So I would tell you that, to me, that, that, that kind of stands, stands for me. And all the basketball stuff in the world uh, pales in comparison. And that, no, that's good stuff. Like, that's still part of basketball, even though it's, you know, it's academics. And that was a man who, like, you – pushed him to get his degree and, and mom's, you know, like you said, she was, she saw that through and, uh, you know, maybe she knew it was her time and, you know, he right. had a chance right. and she saw him walk across that stage and, and that was a yeah. perfect, that's, that's a, that's a perfect story. I, I think. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I mean, I, I honestly, I, I mean, I would tell you that there's probably more stories for me pertaining to that, that stuff, academics and all that kind of stuff than, than probably anything else. I don't know if you remember, you remember Ron Brown at Democratic, uh, co committee chairman, uh, yeah. his son, his son went to Clark. And, uh, I, I remember one morning I, cause I had promised Mr. Brown that I would do everything possible to help him, you know, be successful and continue on their way. And, and, uh, I had to get him out of bed one morning. 
Um, I bang on his door. He looks. I open the door right into his apartment. He's standing and he's sitting, laying down. I said, get up. Let's go. And my assistant was with me. And he says, all right, coach, let me, let me just change my clothes. Let me. I said, you're not changing anything. You, you put your hat on right now and you put your shoes on and let's go. Got to brush my teeth. I don't care about your teeth. You should have brushed your teeth a long time ago. I told your dad I would make sure this, that, and the other thing. And, and let's go. So we took him right to class, watched him walk in the classroom. But like for me, for me, you know, those are the promises that 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 we make, um, and that we definitely have to keep. You know, so that's that that's been important. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. And this is a little bit. So this will make you uh, think a little bit. Uh, but it's there's no basketball. So okay, I'm sure you and your wife. You know, y'all, y'all. You know, I know it's basketball, but you get to watch movies and TVs more. But like. What movie or TV show title best describes your week? Say again. What movie or TV show title best describes your week? My week? Oh, my. First of all, I don't know anything that's on TV. Uh, Anyway, I have no idea what's even on TV. So uh, that's a, that's a, very, very, very difficult question. I don't even know if I have an answer for that. Um, you got movies, you got like, anything you want. Yeah, yeah, but I don't watch movies either. <laughs> you can ask my wife that. I fall asleep on every movie, so I, I, I can't even. Oh, my. Boy, boy. Oh, man. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let you think on that, and I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna come back. I'm gonna let you think on that a little bit. So, um, what's your favorite word or phrase? Favorite word or phrase? Especially when you're talking to your players, you might have that one, you know, that sticks out or. Mm. You 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 really coming kind of hard because I'm I'm trying to think of. You know, I talk to them all very differently, um, so I don't I don't know if there's you know any one thing that that I that I say all the time. Um, hmm. I guess if there's, I mean. I, I, with all of them, I just I'm just always trying to find out how they're really doing. I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't really, I don't really come at them with any program type responses outside of, you know, you okay? You know, like that. I mean, they're always saying to me, "I know you okay, right, coach?" You know, so I mean, I mean, I, I'll always say to them, you know, are you, are you good? You good? You, you okay? You know, like th- throughout a practice, through when I first greet them, um, I always want to know it when I call them now, even. I don't think I do much more than, you know, that I, I mainly because I, it's important to listen. So I, I guess I'm always trying to get a, get a, a response from them. Um, so, so give them a platform to, to, to talk, you know I mean? So I, I don't, I don't think there's any, any one, any one phrase. Um. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Um, you know, best piece. I, I, I don't, you know, I would say um, be yourself, you know, be true to yourself and who you really are and your, your, your roots, so to speak, uh, would be um, something that, that a coach of mine told me a long, long time ago, like, just, just, you don't have to be anything else. You don't have to be anything else. You don't have to be anybody else. Uh, you are from, you are where you're from. You, you've been taught a certain way um, to fit into anything. You don't have to do anything besides be yourself. I like that. Um, now, a lot of people ask this question and, you know, cause like, I, I'll tell you, mine first so I'm a big I always say I go to therapy and my therapy is going to a movie theater but like 
and it could be any time of the day, but like, where is your happy place? My, ha <laughs> my, my happy place, uh, probably in my car, probably in my car. I would tell you, I would tell you that's the one time that, that it's, it's just me. It's just me and my thoughts and I can do anything I want during that time. If I want to, if I want to yell a little bit, I can yell a little bit. Uh, if I want to make a, a phone call and complain, I can make a phone call and complain. Um, you know, I talk to my daughter a lot when I'm, when I'm in the car, um, you know, so that's, that's always been a big thing for me anyway. Um, going back to, to, is my kids, you know what I mean? So having an opportunity to talk to them is, is, is big, you know, I, I can tell you my, and I, and I'll, and I'll veer off a little bit in that, um, my last press conference at, at St. John's, they said to me, um, you know, you, you got to feel bad, you know, like you're leaving here, um, you know, what do you do next? You know, what, you, you know, you know, things are, aren't great, you know, like what, what do you, and, and I stopped them all and, and, I, and I took over the room basically and said, oh, wait, wait a second, wait a second. What are you guys talking about? I said, turn around. And they're like, what do you mean turn around? I said, all of you turn around. And my two little kids were sitting in the back. I said, what, 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 what are you talking about? Like, like, my world is great. There's two innocent kids right there. Can't wait to come hug the dad. They don't even know that anything happened today or anything's happened ever. I said, but my, my world is great. So, I mean, I would tell you that that's, that's probably my best place. I love that. Family, man, family. Um, Kevin, if you had to choose three adjectives to describe yourself, which would you choose? Um, well, you know, you, you, you put me on the spot, too, because of the English language and all of that. You know, you're, you're talking adjectives. I'm like, what is, what is he, what's, what's all this adjective stuff? Um, I, I would tell you consistent, um, calm, I got to keep going. Uh, one more. I'll take one more. Uh, <laughs> Um, mm. honest. Three great ones. That that describes you. I've been I've been knowing you for a long time, and like I've never like you are calm. Like you've, I haven't seen you. You know, um, I've seen people like you. Are, it's like almost an even kill, and like more people probably need to be like you. You never get too high. Never to get get too low. You like. I mean, you like you live life. You 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 happy. So I, I I appreciate that. I appreciate the honesty, especially in our friendship. That's that's something that's big, is important in this business. It goes a long way with people. So I don't think people understand that a lot of times. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Go ahead. You got something to say? Well, I'm, I'm gonna go back to my to the, to your other question um, about a movie uh, on my life. Uh, it would probably be. I was you you familiar with the movie Taken? Oh yeah, yes, yes. Okay, that's me. Okay, okay. That, that that's me. I, I I tell my daughter that all the time. My kids that all the time. That's kind of me, and that's how I. That's a big thing for me, and 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 their safety, and, and and all those types of things. So I live, I live all the time. Like, you know, I would tell my daughter, yeah, you you keep that phone on. Like she she went on a trip not too long ago. I said, okay, you got to ping me. I won't know exactly where you are, you know? So I want to know exactly where you are the whole time. So you keep that on until, until you get back home. So I, I, would, I would tell you that protecting, protecting the family and all of that stuff has always been a big thing. And even keeping some of this basketball stuff that comes out in medias and everything else away from, away from them. Good stuff. Um, like what person and or event probably has had the most influence on your life? Person and or event. Um, 
I would tell you my probably my my I, you know it's hard to to differentiate between the two sometimes you know you, you know my mom and dad were very 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 um very very good people um taught you all the values that that you needed and you know my dad was a worker my dad would work walk to work walk three four miles to work every day rain sleet snow didn't matter he would do it um he'd get off work and he'd go to night school as he was working on his whatever his degrees so um you know so that was that was influential and he took us everywhere we needed to go and you know took the neighborhood kids where they needed to go so we're going to play ball he took everybody he didn't just take his son he took everybody so we load up the station wagon we we take everybody we get out of practice late and the people that missed the bus he load up everybody and he take them no not to somewhere close to their house he took them to their house and watch oh. them walk into their house. Okay, my mom was very, very similar. She would see people, she would see my friends or others that she knew and they'd be doing wrong and she'd, she'd make them come over there and they'd be embarrassed, they'd be so embarrassed that they would stop doing what they were doing. So like I, I, I would tell you that those two people were, were, were huge and I probably never even thank them enough for it, but they, they, they were huge, just the role models and examples um that, that were that were enormous for me um probably especially now as you look back at it i mean you know in, in you know in 68 i mean i was 10 years old martin luther king died um and that was probably that was pretty big as well you know that's a pretty big event that that, yeah. I, that i remember and and as you got older you you understood exactly you know why he died and and, and what he was doing for us Wow, yeah, that that's uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, you got parents and then Martin Luther King. That's 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 huge. Uh, and I always like to kind of end with this one, um, yeah. especially my veteran guys. Is like knowing what you know now. What would you tell your young self to prepare for as an assistant coach? Um. You know, I, I don't, I'm trying to think, that's almost like asking me, what would I do different? I'm not, I'm not sure if there would be a whole lot. Um, my young self, give me, give it to me one more time. He said, so, <laughs> no, I was like, well, yeah, what would you tell your young self? Like, what, knowing what you know now. Yeah. What would you tell your young self to prepare for as an assistant coach? Um, I, I'd say be prepared to to early on make sure you're you're ready to serve your serve your head coach. Keep in mind that you're there to more importantly serve your kids, your players, the way you're supposed to. Um, and that, that you don't let them get away with anything, you know, I mean, at, at that point in time, you've got to have the right, right disciplines and everything else. And, you know, you have to enforce that on, on them. You know, I mean, I would tell you that that would be a big thing that I would, that I would stress. And I know what, I got to ask this. I know you, you mm -hmm. like probably the oldest veteran. I got to ask this because it's just interesting. You've been in it, you know. 35 plus years, you know, and you don't see that a long time. Um, you know, it's only a few, you, few people that do that, but I got to ask this just because you're still in it and you're still active, but what energizes you and brings you excitement? Um, educating, I guess I would tell you, um, the guys that I work with trying to give them what they need to grow. Um, obviously players, uh, making sure that, that they get what they need, um, and making sure that oftentimes that coaches don't, coaches, administrators, um, uh, don't cross the line. 
um, and, 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 you know, I guess continuing to protect those players and, and their rights and um, probably making sure that, that they can fulfill some dreams, you know what I mean? So I, that would be the thing that probably energizes me most. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to tell you that I haven't ever thought about like, wow. How much longer can I do this? I, I have thought about that, uh, you know, on, a, on occasion, but at the same time, when when a young person asks me for some help, and I can see that help them, I mean, and you know, and I've had quite a few of them. Even through my time at Towson, we've had quite a few people come through Towson that are now at what what well what people would consider better jobs. Um, you know, when you, you look at that and say, well, you know, I, I, I had some, I had some impact uh, on their development. Mm, good answer. Well, thank you again, Kevin, for being a guest on the show and being unmasked. Is there anything you want to say to the viewers before we uh, log off? No, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I appreciate you having me and having me, giving me an opportunity to, to share some things. Um, and I guess, I guess if, if, if anybody needed to discuss anything further or wanted to or wanted something a little more in depth at some point in time, um, feel free to reach out. Awesome. Well, thank you, viewers, for watching another great show. Uh, stay tuned for the next guest as we get them unmasked. See you next time and stay safe.